Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about the Black Ops 4 beta that's a little bit more of a thought experiment. Instead of a hardcore numerical analysis, I want you to open your minds and just kind of go with me on this one, on a little journey of thought. And what I want you to think about is balance, counters, and the Holy Trinity in Call of Duty. For those of you that have not heard of the Holy Trinity in Call of Duty, this comes from much older Call of Duty games where you would have three very powerful perks all in one tier. In the same tier, there would be Stopping Power, Juggernaut, and UAV Jammer, which would roughly be increased damage, increased health, or some very powerful type of stealth perk that granted you a variety of stealth abilities. This worked really well to force play to do one thing or another. Most people chose stopping power, a big chunk of people also chose juggernaut, and there was a small but very real group of people that chose neither and went the stealth path and made that one work even though that was the most difficult path. It was impossible to have all of them, and it forced players to choose one thing or another. If a guy's going to have big powerful bullets, he's going to have less health. If he's going to have more health, his bullets are going to take a little longer to kill. And if he's going to choose neither, then he's just not going to show up in the radar, and he's going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. This worked really well for past Call of Duty games, but the developers kind of phased that out because Stopping Power and Juggernaut were annoying, respectively, that some players would just deal more damage or have more health didn't seem right, and the stealth perks kind of got broken up over over time, but I was thinking about this in regards to Black Ops 4, because Black Ops 4 got a lot of complaints about the increased health, about armor, the healing abilities, the power of the specialists, the vision verticals, and a lot of the crazier stuff that's going on in this game. So my little thought, my little theory is, what if we just aren't used to the new meta that Treyarch is trying to introduce? What if Treyarch is really trying to break the mold and introduce their own meta or new new type of Holy Trinity into the Call of Duty games? Because most of the things that players find annoying do seem to have very reasonable counters. Not everything is an exact trinity, so to speak, or in a nature in the old games where you can't have all of them, but just bear with me on this one. Let's start with armor. Armor is the most number one annoyingest thing in the game that I think everybody hates because your enemies just have more health and they get an advantage over you. However, armor is very easily countered by AP rounds. AP rounds just chew right through that and that was my number one go-to as I ran that so I didn't have to deal with armor. However, if you have AP rounds and you fight a user that has stim, well that's not very useful. However, if a user that has stim fights a guy with armor, the armor guy is going to win probably because he just has more health. The problem with this though is they're not all in the same slot. A guy can have AP rounds and armor, or AP rounds and stim, and then he just has an advantage over the armor person. So it's not a one-to-one -one trade. You can double pair these two things, and it's not a trinity so to speak, but they all do counter each other in kind of a circle, and rarely do you see people running all of those things. A similar kind of thing happens when it comes to the specialists. The specialists have a lot of abilities, a lot of plantables, a lot of lethals, just a lot of stuff going on in general. However, my opinion is they're all countered by Engineer. Engineer allows you to see everything through walls. Not only does this give you an idea of what's going on ahead of you, it gives you an idea of what the enemy can and can't see of you, because you see the recon dart, darts and the spawn points and stuff. You see the mines, you see the streaks. It helps you deal with a lot of the specialist equipment and makes it a lot less annoying. It's not a direct counter, but it's sort of a visual counter. However, if uh, somebody's running a whole bunch of engineering perks, you can just run equipment charge instead, which gives you the ability to outspam them. So no matter how much they see your stuff, if your equipment is just available all the time, it's hard for them to deal with it. It's not as direct hard of a counter, but I would consider it a counter to engineer, though the problem is not all of these are in the same slot. Again, everybody will get a specialist, and you can run engineer with equipment charge if you want to, so you can get all three. So it's not exactly a trinity, but there is a a trinity of counters going on. A very similar battle plays out in the Sensing Radar game. Ghost is a very powerful perk. Uh, Cold-Blooded as well, you can kind of put that in here. But Ghost allows you to move around the map, avoid the UAV, you're harder to detect, you're delayed by most of the sensing equipment. Most of the sensing equipment will not pick you up as well. However, the acoustic sensor will hear your big feet step stamping around and you get picked on that. But if you're running team links so that you can see everything that your team sees, that's probably going to just out vision acoustic sensor and you can see more stuff there. This ends up being mostly a perk battle, but it does tie into the gear and you have yet another go around. 
As this story repeats itself, so does our examples. When you look at it, there are a couple of support specialists that counter lethal specialists, in a sense. I think Crash counters Firebreak, because Firebreak's number one ability, minus his Purifier, which just burns people, is his ability to irradiate everything and make it to where the whole team can't heal. That's really annoying to not be able to heal, and if you have somehow survived the Purifier, you still can't heal. However, Crash's medic ability overrides this and just instant heals you up to more health than you had before, so he's a pretty hard counter to Firebreak. In a similar kind of way, Seraph puts down her spawn beacon, which is very annoying because people spawn on it, it's hard to control them, but if you put a sensor dart nearby, you'll see where they are and have a much better idea of the flow and you can get them handled. Ruin, on the other hand, counters people like Crash or Twerk that have a lot of plantables, or anybody that puts down a physical object that you have to destroy. Ruin can just grapple in and slam it before the object can really mess with him too much. And even though he's considered more of a lethal specialist, I found him more useful just for cleaning things out. However, on the flip side of this, Crash and Recon and all these support guys get ruined by pretty much any lethal ability. An Annihilator, a Tempest, a Purifier, they just don't have that kind of power and they get put down by it pretty hard when it's 1v1. And maybe I'm imagining things, maybe I'm trying to force some positivity that isn't there, maybe I'm overanalyzing, maybe I'm crazy, but I think I'm seeing some sort of higher level meta developing here. The whole picture is not yet clear, and it may not be for some time because we're not playing a finished game with finished balance and there's so much stuff that we haven't seen, but everything does seem to have some sort of reasonable counter. I think the difficult part balance-wise for Treyarch is choosing what to put what counter where, and since you have a lot of flexibility in create a class, unlike older, older COD games, you can theoretically multi-counter things or be multi-countered, so perhaps a little simplification would help. I think that when the full game comes out and we get all the unlocks and the pub stompers get their hands on it so we can see what the sweaty boys are going to do, and then the pro players get their hands on it to see what the really sweaty boys are going to do, that, that mostly regards around spawns and map control and stuff like that, and we see what these two groups of extreme players are going to do, we're going to have a much better understanding of the full meta of the game. Guys, that's all for this short video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.